Hello and welcome to second part of our Microsoft Certified DevOps Engineer Expert Ultimate course, folks. We are starting with question number 11. You use Azure pipelines to build and test code projects. You notice an increase in cycle times. You need to identify whether agent pool exhaustion is causing the issue. What are two possible ways to achieve this goal? Your options are query the pipeline run or pipeline runs endpoint, query the task agent pool size snapshots endpoint, view the pipeline duration report, view the pool consumption report at the organization level. Folks, to determine if agent pool exhaustion is causing increased cycle time in Azure pipeline, the best options are option B and option D. This task agent pool size snapshots endpoint provides historical snapshots of the agent pool size and usage. And by analyzing these snapshots, you can identify if all agents were busy, leading to delays in job execution. And you can also view the pool consumption report at the organization level, which shows how agent pools are being utilized across the agents. If the agent demand consistently exceeds availability, it confirms agent pool exhaustion. Next question. You use semantic versioning as a dependency versioning strategy. You perform changes to code as shown in the following table. You basically have performed three changes with the name of change one, change two, and change three, out of which change one and change two are new functionalities, whereas change three is not a new functionality. Change one and change three are introducing minor incompatibility issues, whereas change two is introducing a significant incompatibility issue. Which part of the version should you increment for each change? Each part may be used once, more than once, or not at all. And the three parts are major, minor, and patch. Now friends, when you add new functionality that might be backward compatible, then you need to increment minor version. Minor indicates that the package and its contents have extensive modifications but are smaller than a major change. These changes can be backward compatible with the previous version, although they are not guaranteed to be. Now friends, when you make incompatible API changes, then you need to increment major version. Major version indicates that the package and its contents have changed significantly. It often occurs at the introduction of a new version of the package. It can be a redesign of the component. Major changes are not guaranteed to be compatible and usually have breaking changes from older versions. Major changes might require a large amount of work to adopt the consuming code base to the new version. And folks, whenever you make backward compatible bug fixes, then you need to increment patch version. A patch or revision is used to indicate that a flaw, bug, or malfunctioning part of the component has been fixed. Usually, it is backward compatible version compared to the previous versions. Next question, friends. You have an Azure web app that is deployed by using Azure pipelines. You need to ensure that when a new version of the app is deployed to production, you can roll back to the previous version. The solution must meet the following requirements. Minimize downtime during the deployment. Minimize the time it takes for the rollback. What should you use? Your options are a single web app and two deployment slots, a single web app and two deployment pipelines, two web apps and an Azure standard load balancer, two web apps and an Azure traffic manager instance. Now, friends, you should make use of a single web app and two deployment slots. Azure deployment slots allow you to deploy a new version of your application to a staging slot while keeping the production slot running. Once the deployment is validated in the staging slot, you can quickly swap the slots to push the new version to production. If an issue is detected, you can immediately swap back to the previous version with minimal downtime. So folks, I hope you now understand why I have chosen option A as the correct choice here. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Question number 14 of the series. 
you have an Azure pipeline that is used to deploy a web app. The pipeline includes a test suite named Test Suite 1. Test Suite 1 is used to validate the operations of the web app. Test Suite 1 fails intermittently. You identify that the failures are unrelated to changes in the source code and execution environment. You need to minimize troubleshooting effort for the test suite one failures. The solution you choose is you implement the test results trend widget. Does this meet the goal? You need to tell whether this is right or wrong. Now friends, the test result trend widget in Azure DevOps helps visualize test results over time, showing patterns and trends in test failures. However, while it provides useful historical data, it does not actively help minimize troubleshooting effort for intermittent test failures. You should instead use the flaky test detection feature in Azure DevOps to identify and quarantine unreliable tests. Feel free to browse through the link on your screen to understand more about flaky tests and how to enable flaky test management. Let's look at question number 15 of the series. You are designing YAML based Azure pipelines for the apps shown in the following table. You basically have two apps with the name of app one and app two. App one is hosted on Azure virtual machine platform and app two is hosted on Azure Kubernetes service cluster. Now the release requirements for app one is replace a fixed set of existing instances of the previous version of app one with instances of the new version of the app in each iteration. And the release requirement of app two is roll out a limited deployment of the new version of app two to validate the functionality of the app. Once testing is successful, expand the rollout. You need to configure the YAML strategy value for each app. The solution must minimize app downtime. Which value should you configure for each app? Now for app one, the options are canary, rolling and run once. Now folks, you should use rolling deployment strategy for app one as a rolling deployment strategy replaces instances of the previous version of an application with instances of the new version of the application on a fixed set of virtual machines in each iteration. And folks, rolling deployment strategies only supported for virtual machine resources. Now friends, for app two, again, you have all those three options, which is canary, rolling and run once. And you should use canary deployment strategy for app two because canary deployment strategy is an advanced deployment strategy that helps mitigate the risk involved in rolling out new versions of applications. By using this strategy, you can roll out the changes to a small subnet of servers first. As you gain more confidence in the new version, you can release it to more servers in your infrastructure and route more traffic to it. Your company uses Azure DevOps for the build pipelines and deployment pipelines of Java based projects. You need to recommend a strategy for managing technical depth. Which two actions should you include in the recommendation? Your options are configure post deployment approvals in the deployment pipeline, configure pre deployment approvals in the deployment pipeline, integrate Azure DevOps and Sonar Cube, integrate Azure DevOps and Azure DevTest Labs. Folks, the best two actions here would be to integrate Azure DevOps and Sonar Cube and also configure pre deployment approvals in the deployment pipeline. Sonar Cube is a code quality and security tool that helps detect code smells, vulnerabilities, and maintainability issues. It provides static code analysis to monitor and reduce technical depth by enforcing coding standards and best practices. And, folks, Pre-deployment approvals ensure that a deployment does not proceed until quality checks are met. This prevents low quality code from being released, thereby reducing technical depth over time. Next question. You are developing a full Microsoft.NET framework solution that includes unit tests. You need to configure Sonar Cube to perform a code quality validation of the C-sharp code as part of the build pipeline. Which four tasks should you perform in sequence? Your options are run code analysis, visual studio test, publish build artifacts, visual studio build, prepare analysis configuration. 
Now, folks, the first step would be to prepare the analysis configuration for Sonar Cloud as you need to set up the connection between Azure DevOps and Sonar Cube, defining project settings and authentication. This should be followed by building your .NET project as it is required to generate the necessary binaries and analysis data for Sonar Cube. The third task that you will need to perform here would be to run the unit tests. And finally, you run the code analysis using the Sonar Cloud tools. So folks, these are all the four tasks that you will have to perform in sequence in this use case. Next question. During a code review, you discover many quality issues. Many modules contain unused variables and empty cache blocks. You need to recommend a solution to improve the quality of the code. What should you recommend? Your options are in a grunt built task, select enabled from control options. In a Maven build task, select run PMD. In a Xcode build task, select use XC pretty from advanced. In a Gradle build task, select run check style. Friends, the correct answer here is option B. PMD is a static code analysis tool that identifies common coding flaws such as unused variables, empty cache blocks, duplicate code, complex methods, which is why PMD is the correct choice here. Let's understand why other options are incorrect here. Grunt is a JavaScript task runner. XCPretty is a tool to format Xcode build logs for better readability. And check style is another static code analysis tool, but it mainly focuses on enforcing coding standards, which includes formatting, naming conventions, not detecting logical code issues like unused variables or empty catch blocks. Next question, friends. You have a multi-tier application that has an Azure Web Apps front end and an Azure SQL database backend. You need to recommend a solution to capture and store telemetry data. The solution must meet the following requirements. Support using ad hoc queries to identify baselines. Trigger alerts when metrics in the baseline are exceeded. Store application and database metrics in a central location. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Event Hubs, Azure SQL Database Intelligent Insights, Azure Application Insights, Azure Log Analytics. Now, folks, Event Hub is for real-time event streaming like IoT, logs, telemetry ingestion, but it does not provide querying capabilities or built-in alerting, so an incorrect choice. Now, Azure SQL Database Intelligent Insights focuses only on database performance tuning and anomalies in SQL Database, not full application telemetry, so another incorrect choice. Azure Application Insights is great for monitoring web applications, but does not store SQL database metrics centrally, which leaves us with the correct choice, that is option D. Azure Log Analytics stores application and database metrics in a single location, and you can use KQL to analyze and establish baselines. Log Analytics can trigger alerts when metrics exceed thresholds. Question number 20 of the series. You are automating the testing process for your company. You need to automate UI testing of a web application. Which framework should you use? Your options are Zacoco, Selenium, Xamarin.UITest, Microsoft.CodeAnalysis. Now friends, Selenium is the best choice for automating UI testing of a web application. It supports multiple browsers while allowing writing test scripts in multiple programming languages. It also simulates user interactions and integrates with Azure DevOps. As always, let's understand what's the use case of other options. Jacoco is a code coverage tool for Java applications. Xamarin.UITest is UI testing for mobile application. And Microsoft.CodeAnalysis is used for static code analysis. So folks, I hope you now understand what is the use case of all the frameworks mentioned in the question. That's all for this part of the series. If you have liked the content, then do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. We will be back soon with more such questions in our Microsoft Certified DevOps Engineer Expert Ultimate course.